Hello, my name is Joseph Carlson, and this is episode 223 of Gaming with Grief, and I'm calling this episode The Last of Us 10 Years Later. Um, actually, it's about 10 years later. Um, I replayed The Last of Us. It was remastered on PS4. Uh, I want to say it was actually remastered in 2014. At least that's what the copyright said. On the game, when I loaded up, um, I, I just decided to try this game again because, you know, it's been out for 10 years. The show on HBO came out earlier this year. Um, and I just wanted to talk about what I thought, about what it was like to go back and play the game and my thoughts on, um, you know, what I thought going back and playing something that was, in my opinion, probably one of the best ever games you know, one of the top 10 games ever made, you know, the fusion of cinematics with storytelling, with um, performance, all that kind of stuff came together. And I, I wanted to go back and play it. And, and I realized that my pod started, you know, it didn't start when the game released. And so I did review The Last of Us Part Two. That was very early on. In fact, that was one of my very early on episodes where I... Um, I, I couldn't get to finish Last of Us Part Two on time, and I had to do like a eight minute episode or something to apologize, and then come back the next week and finish it. I was playing it that whole day trying to get it done. Um, anyway, I went back and played the Last of Us. What do I think? Almost ten years later. In fact, let me get the official date um, because I want um, to get. There we go. It came out uh, June 14th, 2013. So it's actually been slightly over uh, 10 years, um, which is pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, what what did I think going back? Um, it's still amazing. You know, I didn't, I, again, I didn't read anything or read any kind of like, um, I don't know, any spoilers again, because yes, I played the game there's been so much talk, especially now, like I mentioned with the HBO show coming out. Um, you know, my friends and I have talked a lot online about, um, you know, uh, what we thought of the ending. You know, there's always discourse about the ending, which, I, again, I will spoil. I've talked about this before. I will spoil The Last of Us uh, towards the end. But, you know, there was big talk in the gaming sphere about, oh, now that the show's out, now these people... Uh, that aren't familiar with the story will kind of experience the end of the game, as it were, the story of The Last of Us, and now we can have that discourse whether Joel is a good or bad person. Um, but some things stuck out to me when I played it again. Um, you know, I know the criticism back in the day was maybe that the gameplay didn't hold up. And although I don't, I say this all the time, but I'm doing it more, so I should probably stop saying it. I don't normally review gameplay and stuff like that. I'm talking more about the story and lore and characters and things like that. What I think is interesting about The Last of Us is I don't really think I was fighting with the controls. I just feel that some of the things uh, that I wanted to do, the game made it difficult for me to do. And you, you never want to have that feeling when you're playing a game that something's pushing back against you. If you want, you can watch my episode on... Um, oh, now I totally uh, forgot it. Um, uh, Arise, a simple story. That's what it was. That that game I really felt was pushing back actively against me actually just playing the game, which felt very frustrating. There was other reasons, I think, with the, on the grief side that I didn't like it. You can go back and listen to that episode. Um, but I um, with this, I didn't, it, it didn't, it, it, it wasn't actively pushing back against me. There was just a few things where, I uh, I thought this is weird, like when you would be doing melee against uh, like a runner or something, and there was maybe another runner behind you, one of the proto clickers, or before they're actually clickers, it's like someone infected and they run after you and try to hit you. Like the idea that um, you would punch someone and then someone's right behind you, and you know your natural thing would be maybe to grab them and start punching them after you knocked one person down. But they did this thing where you would just swing into the air and they would grab you easily. There was several scenes where you could tell it was more cinematic where a bloater, I'd be fighting a bloater and it would be not near me. I'm going to be very clear. 
you know, you're, I was trying to keep eye contact with those bloaters at all times. And when you're like, okay, they're way over there. I'm going to run over here and fight this person where there would be an end screen all of a sudden where, uh, the bloater would grab you and like rip your face off basically. And I thought that was kind of frustrating. I know, like I said, the, the little criticism I read of the game when it came out 10 years ago was many people just didn't like the combat or didn't think that it advanced things. And I, I agree, you know, there's weapon sway, uh, that you have to upgrade. You basically take supplements to upgrade. You have to basically, I think, play the game twice to upgrade everything hundred percent because, um, uh, you know, you can't do it all in one run. I don't think there's enough supplements. I think if you get close, you still can't do it. Um, but I, you know, for the most part, it was good. The quick time events I thought were weird. You know, you're trying to push. If I, they did it in Last of Us 2 where you basically have to move a dumpster to a location to jump onto something. That get very tiring. There was a joke about Ellie not being able to swim and you having to use a pallet. And I think even the developers knew, hey, we're using this pallet quite a bit. So Ellie actually says the line, oh, this, this fucking thing again. You know, um, and so I think it was they were like, yeah, this is getting really frustrating for us to her to continue to use this palette. Um, I don't you know, other than that, I thought the gameplay was good, you know, especially when you take a clicker out or something or try to set up a trap to get multiple infected. But I mean, we're really here to talk about the story. And I got to say, I thought in the very beginning how they set up, you know, what happened to uh, Sarah, Joel's original, you know, Joel's daughter how she died was very, it was still very impactful. Even though, you know, you, you, again, I played this before. There's been so much discourse about it. Uh, playing it again, I think it's still packed a punch. You know, the idea that um, Joel wakes up, I think it's been 10 years. That's one thing I didn't write down, but he wakes up. Uh, and uh, we find out that he basically is kind of like uh, a runner. You know, he'll get what you need for a price. He doesn't mind killing people or hurting people. He works with um, Tess uh, and they kind of work together. And I thought that was all set up really well. I do like later when he goes back to see his brother, um, Tommy, they have this whole interaction with Tommy saying, you know, you, you know, Joel's kind of a bad person. He does bring it up to Ellie every once in a while, you know, especially there's a famous scene where they actually get a car and they're driving and a guy comes out in the room and says, please help us, help us. And he goes, you know, and Ellie's like, are you going to stop? And Joel just guns it and says, no, 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 he's not even hurt. And then hits the guy, a bunch of things happen, whatever. And she says, how did you know that he was faking it, basically? And he says, I've been on both sides of that. So you you obviously know that Joel is not like a very good person or wasn't. He's trying to get it better, I think. And his interaction with Tommy, I really liked, which I forgot. He goes and sees Tommy, tries to offload Ellie once he gets her to Tommy and says, I got to go my own way. Please take her. I don't want to take her anymore. But they have an interaction in the beginning about, you know, um, Joel basically says that I kept you alive all those years. You know, why are you treating me like this? And Tommy says, I have nightmares from the things that we did. You know, th this isn't a way to live, you know. Um, I like that. There's also a scene, Sam and Henry, the um, two people you meet on the road, uh, one is very young, one is it's two brothers, one is an older brother, one is younger brother. The younger brother, um, I think Sam, gets bit. Uh, Henry shoots himself after he finds out that his brother, uh, he shoots his brother to get him off Ellie and then shoots himself. That still hit. Apparently that's in the show. I've only seen, I think, one episode of the show. Um, in fact, next week I'm going to have my friend on, uh, Martin. He's been on the show several times. He has watched the whole show and he hasn't played the game. So we're going to try to like compare and contrast things that hit for the movie that like, was this in the show? Was this in the game? Did you like this? Was this impactful? This is what I think is impactful in the show. Here's what I think is impactful in the game. You know, this did it better. That did it better. So on and so forth. We'll do that next week, um, which I'm actually uh, looking forward to. Um, but I'll say that I, you know, playing it now, all the big beats hit. Again, I like when Tommy and... Um, Joel have their thing together where it's like you basically you are not a good person I'm trying to be a good person I don't like who I was or what I did in those places and it's just um it's crazy to me that this thing still holds up 
the end is so heartbreaking when you know, like the one criticism everybody's made of the game, I think after it's been released, is the fact that no one asked Ellie uh, to do, like, do you want this? Because leading up to it, her decision to go under the knife, have them remove uh, parts of her brain and basically, hopefully, make a cure. Um, I don't know if that is like uh, accurate. Not that that didn't happen or was supposed to happen, but would would they have been successful making a cure? I believe Neil Druckmann interview the you know, the writer of the game said they would have been successful. It would have worked, um, but you don't know that playing the game. I don't think you know it's an if, and I think that's why Joel makes a decision he does to take her off the operating table and run away with her. Um, he doesn't want to lose somebody else, and if it's you know, it's not guaranteed. Why do that? I totally get that. What what I think is interesting, though, is um, that I do understand from a point, again, Joel's stance of, I can't let this happen again. You know, what's the point? If you don't know for sure, why are we going to take this chance on someone that I care about? But um, I think uh, Marlene, who's the head of the Firefly, says it best, like, it isn't just about you and me, you know, um, it's about everybody. And even to this point, uh, Ellie, at, before you get to the hospital, kind of leading up, she gets kind of sad. And she said, well, it can't be for nothing. And I think with her attitude of having that, it can't be for nothing. Because maybe she didn't know the extent of what they were going to do to her to do the procedure. They didn't know they were gonna, like, we're going to, you're dying, basically. We're taking your brain, we're chopping it up, we're experimenting on it. Um, I think she would have, if somebody would have asked, this is what's going to, we're going to have to do because it seems like even when they prepped her for surgery, they, they didn't tell her all the way. Like, um, did they tell her? I, maybe I missed something. I would, I, I tried to look that up, but that just seems like that's like online, whatever. It seems like if they would have asked her right before they put her under, Hey, if this, this is what we need to do. We will need to dissect your brain. Like you're basically giving up your life, you know? Is that okay? And if she would have consented to that, the whole game's different, you know? Um, but now there's this ambiguity of, of course, you'd save the one you love. She meant so much to him. It's not his daughter. Ellie is Joel's surrogate daughter. You know, this had to happen. But I don't know if... I mean, Jules, I don't think a bad person. He has done a bad... I, I think he's getting to be a better person. He has done a bad thing. He has doomed people. But um, I know in... I mean, quick spoilers for The Last of Us 2, which I ruined several episodes ago. Ellie does find out that like Joel lied to her and stuff and the Fireflies would have done whatever. It has been several years, I think... She was like 11 or 12 in the first game. And I think in the second game, she's 19. So it's been six, seven years. My question is, if she was so ambiguous about everything going on and said, listen, it can't be for nothing. I meant that when I was 12. I mean, it now when I'm 15, 16, 17, whatever, I'm going to go to some doctors. I'm going to go to the Fireflies or whatever the form of, uh, I don't know what it was that was built up in Jackson. I'm going to go and turn myself in. I'm going to tell them, hey, I'm okay. Let's do this. I'm because it seems like in the second one, some people know she may be immune or something. I'm not sure. But I think <clears throat> for her to turn herself in again and say, I'm going to do it. You know, here's the deal. It was a bad thing back then, uh, especially, you know, spoilers for the last of two, Joel dies. Um, she could say that's gone and done. I've made my peace with how I feel about Joel. Maybe she didn't. That was the whole point of The Last of Us 2. But maybe she could say, let's do it now. If you got to take part of my brain, do it. Because it seems like humanity's in a better place. There's fewer clickers and stuff. They just, the churn rate. I don't, well, I mean, it's, things maybe aren't a better place. But there's civilizations and now walled areas that keep people safe and all that. I don't know. I think 10 years in, it's still, you know, that's a game that I still think about a lot. I, you know, uh, when somebody... Like next week when we have Martin on and we talk about the differences between the show and the game, you know, I still want to have these conversations. Was Joel bad? Did he do a bad thing? Is he a good person making a bad decision? Obviously, he doomed humanity or did he? 
you know, what other breakthroughs have they made? Have they been able to take apart Cordyceps brains? Like, it seems like some of that has dropped. Or maybe I missed some lore in the game, like a note pickup. Or a, I know there's some medical records at the end I didn't uh, pick up. But I have this thing I've told, uh, talked about m many times in the pod that, like, if I get towards the end of something, I have to keep pushing forward. I can't just... Like, oh, let me stop and try to... Like, there may have been collectibles in that hospital uh, when I was trying to get Ellie. I don't know. I think I found one Fire Fire Planet because I picked up ammo. And I was like, oh, Fire Fire Planet. I picked it up. But I'm not one of those people, especially towards the end in a narrative like this, you have to get Ellie. She's under the knife. There's a little bit of a ticking clock. I have to go save her. I have to do it right now. And so for me, it is pretty amazing. The game's still amazing, still makes... Uh, you know, tons of good decisions. The gameplay maybe hasn't aged as well, but I think it is still good. It is not terrible. I mean, obviously that's up for your interpretation, but I think the things it talks about with grief, one of the things I wanted to bring up that um, happened, which really got me was there's this whole scene where, you know, Joel meets with his brother, Tommy. Tommy decides to help get her to the Fireflies. And then you get interrupted because she, Ellie has stolen a horse and gone away so Joel and Tommy go chase her they go to a farmhouse basically and um Joel and her have this massive conversation and what I love about it what I love about the conversation it's two sides of like the same coin where she basically says you don't want to talk to me I'm not I, I know I'm not your daughter he gets very mad that Ellie brings up his daughter Sarah um, but she says, listen, you know, he, he says, you're on thin ice. You don't know what it's like to lose someone. And I think that is so, that's in, I don't even know the medical term, but like the kind of, I don't know, the deep end of grief in a way of like, you know, my pain is so much that, you know, your pain doesn't matter. And I think it's important in that scene when Ellie tells him, listen, everybody I've loved, like I've lost people too. Everybody I have loved has either left me or died. She says that to him. Everybody that I've loved has either left me or died. And I think that was such a powerful scene because it's basically shaking Joel, trying to shake Joel and say, listen, you're not the only person here. You know, there's other people here. We, we need, like, we need to work together. You can't leave me. You know, that's one of the th reasons why she's angry with him is because he's going to leave her again. And she doesn't want to be, a she tells somebody, I think it's um Sam, that uh, the kids they meet on the road, Sam's a younger brother. She says, you know, he said, what's your biggest fear? And she says, he's being left alone. And I think that was like pretty, pretty amazing, you know, that she was just so open and said, I'm afraid of being left alone. And, and that's why her interaction with Joel, it's so great, you know? So um, I think that's it. You know, uh, again, I'll talk about this next week with Martin. Uh, we'll get into it, as it were. Uh, really looking forward to it. Um, I was going to do this in the beginning of my podcast, but I've talked for almost 20 minutes now. I'm kind of glad it'll just be Martin and I kind of hashing stuff out. So I think that's it this week. Uh, everybody enjoy your week. Be safe. And I will see you guys again next week.